Welcome to this introduction to taking good notes. This session aims to help you develop the skills you need to take effective notes at each stage of your academic career, from readings to revision. Before you begin any form of note taking, it's really important to think about the aim of your notes, as this will help you to choose the best method for your needs. Many of us take notes in order to create our own summaries of the sources we're looking at. This means that we save time in the future since we don't have to go back and consult the original to find what we need when it comes to writing up or revising. It's important to remember that these summaries are shorter versions of the key points made in our own words, not just copies of the original. The act of taking notes is a learning activity in itself and it can help to increase your, our understanding of the material. It also forces us to actually think about the information that we're recording and turns reading or listening from a passive to an active learning activity. Taking notes also gives you a chance to reflect on your learning and how it relates to other information you already have. This can help you to draw connections between topics and identify gaps in your knowledge that you need to fill. Many of us use our notes to help us revise for exams. The act of taking notes can help you to commit facts and ideas to memory and aid your later recall. Lots of students use note taking as a key revision strategy for this reason. Lastly, good notes help you to avoid plagiarism by clearly showing the source of the various ideas you're using in your own work. Most plagiarism is accidental and comes as a result of poor or rushed note taking, where you copy extracts or ideas without noting down where they're from. When it comes to writing up an essay, it's easy to get confused about which ideas come from where, so it's important to have a good note taking strategy in place. There are many different types of notes, so you're sure to find a format to suit your own situation and preferences. It's important to stress that there's no right or wrong way to take notes. The important thing is to find something that records all the information you need and that works for you. These are just a few suggestions to get you thinking. The most common types of notes are text-based written notes, as this is how most of us have been taught to make notes throughout our academic careers. When we take notes this way, they tend to automatically follow the structure of whatever we're taking notes from. For example, the headings and subheadings in a chapter. Whilst this is not necessarily a bad thing, as it offers a guideline for your notes, it can be a bit too linear and not particularly suited to your needs. Remember that these are your notes, so you can rearrange things if that helps. Although obviously this is easier done with digital notes than paper ones. It's becoming increasingly popular to use visual methods to take or to enhance notes. Techniques such as sketch noting include a combination of text and drawings to represent the concepts and ideas discussed in the source. They're particularly useful for creating summaries of larger topics as they force you to only include the really important points. Using visuals in this way can help to simulate a different part of your brain than text. And the more parts of the brain you use, the more likely it is that you'll see increased understanding and recall. You don't have to be a great artist to include visuals in your notes. Remember that no one is going to see them but you. However you take notes, you can go back and annotate them to fill in gaps in your knowledge, more fully explain concepts or add any further details. This can help you to draw connections between different topics or other material that you've looked at. Your notes should be a living document that you add to as your learning progresses and annotation can really help with this. A common question we get is, should notes be handwritten or digital? Well, really, this is a matter of personal preference, but there are some advantages to each approach. Handwritten notes are easy to make with the most basic of equipment, and you don't need to rely on a fully charged battery. But digital notes can be retrieved from anywhere across multiple devices. The important thing to remember is that you need to find a system that works for you and the way that you study. You'll probably need to subtly vary your note taking strategy depending on what you're taking notes from and what you want to do as a result of the notes. When taking notes from readings, the important thing to remember is that these are intended to be a shortened version of the original, so you don't need to record every single point. Think about what you want to know from the source, why you're reading it and how it relates to other things that you might have read or watched. 
This will help you to focus on taking notes on the points you need rather than trying to copy everything down. It's really important to make your notes in your own words unless you're recording a direct quote. It can be really, really tempting just to copy the material, but this can get you into trouble if you end up using it in an assignment without proper acknowledgement because you've lost track of which bits you copied, and which were your own words. Writing notes in your own words also helps to test your understanding and interpretation of the material, which is more valuable for learning than your ability to copy out words. Whether taking notes or recording a quote, it's really important to include the full details of what it is that you're reading. This includes information like the author, the title, year of publication, and perhaps most importantly, the page numbers. It might seem like an extra hassle at the time, but it will save future you so much time and stress further down the line. We can guarantee that you won't remember where you found something unless you write it down. And if you find you need to cite it, you're going to end up spending hours online or in the library hunting for the details. You might even find that you end up rereading the same resource without realising it, which is a complete waste of time that you don't have. You might want to make copies of the original to refer back to, highlight or annotate. Digital tools make this process a lot easier, but remember that the aim of highlighting is to make things stand out, so don't be tempted to over-highlight, as this can just end up being confusing. It's also important to remember copyright here, as this may impact the amount of material that you're able to legally make copies of. Taking notes from lectures is a process that goes far beyond the lecture itself. The work starts before the lecture, when you need to think about how the material to be covered fits in with the rest of your learning. Take a look at the course outline and think about how the content of this lecture fits in with other concepts that have been discussed. Are there any important questions you have that you hope this lecture will answer? You might want to do some preparatory reading to familiarise yourself with the topic so you can make the most out of the time in the lecture itself. You also need to think about practicalities like making sure you have all the supplies you need to take your notes as this will just make things easier on the day. Sometimes you'll be provided with the slides in advance of the lecture. And you might want to think about using these to create a handout to record your notes next to the slides themselves and give some context. The bulk of your note taking will obviously happen in the lecture itself. Try to practice active listening by really engaging with what's said rather than just passively recording it. This will help you to keep your notes concise and useful. You might also want to use shorthand or abbreviations so you can keep up with the speed at which the lecturer is speaking. Most lecturers will make their slides available for students after the lecture, so you don't have to worry about copying down everything that's included on these. Instead, try to focus on the added content that the lecturer themselves is providing. This is where the most valuable information is to be found. It's important to continue learning and taking notes after the lecture itself. Go back over your notes and see if there are any gaps you need to fill or areas that you didn't quite understand. You can fill these in during discussions with your lecturer or with further reading. Perhaps the most important thing to do with your notes post-lecture is to write yourself a short summary in your own words. This will help you both to test your understanding and prepare for any subsequent lectures or exams. Recordings like this one have become far more common over the last couple of years. These include both the availability of recordings of live lectures so you can review content and specifically made recordings such as this one. When it comes to taking notes, there are several similarities with taking notes from lectures, but there are also some crucial differences to be aware of. As with live lectures, it's really important that you have a plan and do some prep work prior to watching the recording. Consider what it is that you want to get out of your viewing. Are you watching this for the first time or are you using it to review previously seen content and fill in any gaps? Thinking about your goals and what you want to know will help you prepare for your viewing and to make the best use of your time. As with live lectures, it's important to have all your supplies to hand so that you don't have to break your concentration to go and find something you need. The best thing you can do with a recording is to treat it as though you were watching it live. Watch the whole thing through at least once without stopping, as you would if you were there in person, and take notes as you would in a live lecture. It can be really tempting to keep rewinding the video and noting down what was said just because you can, but this may leave you with a transcription rather than a useful set of notes. 
If you missed a point or want clarification, then of course you can use the rewind button to go over it again. But it's really important that you don't keep re-watching the whole thing so that a one hour session takes you three hours to complete. This really isn't the best use of your time and it won't aid your learning. Summarize the recording in your own words and make a note of where you need to fill in any gaps, just like you would with a live lecture. There are various techniques and templates that you can use to make note taking easier. Remember that these are only examples to get you thinking rather than an exhaustive list. It's important to find the method or methods that work for you. The outline method is ranked as one of the best note taking methods by students and researchers who describe it as both simple and effective. This method involves using the main points of the topic as headings and building your notes around these to create an easy to follow outline. You can further divide your notes using subheadings to create a hierarchical system where you can find the relevant section at a glance. Under these headings, you can include any supporting facts, links to relevant information and further sources, or add your own thoughts on the points raised. This system helps to give order and structure to your notes so you can easily see what the most important elements are, which is extremely useful when it comes to revision. Developed at Cornell University in the 1950s, the Cornell system is a useful template to use if you struggle with note taking, as it provides space for all the different elements you need to take good notes. This template divides the page into several different sections for specific information, including prompting you to record the full reference details of the source, which will help you to find it later. The main body of the page is your notes area. You can make notes here, however you wish, but it's a good idea to use headings to give you some sort of structure. The main advantage in the Cornell method can be found in the boxes at the side and the bottom of the page. At the side, we have the Q column, which offers space for you to add your own thoughts on a topic and add in any questions that you might have. This is a really useful way to annotate your notes without them feeling cluttered and can help you to keep your notes as a living document, which forms the basis of your learning. At the bottom of the page, there is room to summarise your notes in a few short sentences. Try to do this in your own words within about 48 hours to test your recall and understanding, skills that will again come in handy when it comes for, to revision. If you prefer something more visual, you might want to consider mind maps or spider diagrams. This method is all about identifying the main concept of a resource and drawing a map of how they link together. Much like the outline method, you begin with the central topic and then divide this into subtopics. But instead of listing these, you use them to create branches out from the main topic. You can add as many subtopic branches as you need and branch out further to include supporting evidence, key facts or examples. The main advantage of this method is that it lets you literally draw connections between topics. You may find that you combine branches or create new ones as a result of this. Mind maps are particularly useful if you want to get everything you know about a topic down on paper, or you want to start planning the structure of an essay, as it lets you see everything in one go. You can draw a mind map on paper, or alternatively, there are several online templates or apps that can help you. Unlike the previous methods discussed, the boxing method was specifically designed for those who take digital notes. The idea is to write your notes inside small boxes and then use these to group together similar topics. Because you're doing this on a screen, it's much easier to reposition the content of your notes. Once you have your notes in groups, you can add headings so that you can get an idea of the main topic and thread of the conversation. This method was designed to help keep notes on related concepts together and to look pleasing on a screen, which some of the other methods fail to do. It also forces you to take quite concise notes to make sure that they fit into the boxes, which can be useful if you find that you often end up with notes that are too long. Notes exist to be used. Although it might be tempting, it's a waste of time just to take notes and then put them away never to be looked at again. If you take good notes, they can help you both when writing up and revising for exams. There are several ways that you can include information from your notes in your essays. It's important to familiarise yourself with different methods as you'll be expected to use a range in order to get good marks. One of the most obvious methods that we use is directly quoting materials, 
including short extracts from others in your own work with references indicating where the original was published. This method should really be used sparingly, as what assessors want to see is your thoughts on the topic, not just how much you can quote other people. Quotes are best left when the reader needs to see the original words of the statement, perhaps because this is the best way of saying it, or because the author is an authority on the topic whose thoughts add weight to your argument. It's better to incorporate the ideas of others by summarising or paraphrasing. Summarising involves providing a synopsis or overview of a work to your reader. The aim is to help the reader understand the main points of a source without needing to go look at the original. Paraphrasing means outlining the wider meaning of the work to your reader. Your paraphrase should be shorter than the original source. The crucial element of both of these approaches is using your own words. Don't fall into the trap of just rearranging the words of the original source, but use your own expressions to demonstrate your understanding of the source and how it relates to the point that you're making. This is where having made good notes in your own words, which summarise sources, will definitely come in handy. Whichever method you're using, you should remember to include references to any ideas that aren't your own, whether they're a direct quote or not. This not only helps you to avoid accusations of accidental plagiarism, but allows you to showcase the wider breadth of your reading. Your notes are one of the best revision tools available. They record information from lectures and readings, as well as your own thoughts and connections, meaning that you're not left all the revision until the last minute. There are some extra steps you can take to help further prepare your notes for revision. Start by decluttering your notes. Sort through everything you have to remove any duplicate information or notes that you no longer feel are relevant. This will help you to avoid wasting time on things you don't need. Next, collate everything you have on each topic for easy access and to see where you have any gaps that need filling. If you followed the same or similar note-taking format for each topic, this will make it easier to compare the notes that you have. At the end of this process, you should be left with a sorted set of notes on the topics that you need to revise. It's important to be active, not passive, when revising using your notes. Reading through them is one revision strategy, but this will only get you so far. Go through them again and include any new annotations or highlights as you go, based on information that you might have gathered since they were originally written. Ask questions and see how the concepts link together, perhaps creating a new mind map based on all your notes. You can also use your notes to test yourself as you revise. Use index cards to record the key points on a topic until you have them memorized. Create flashcards with the concept on one side and brief notes on the other, and use these to refresh your memory. By using your notes as an active part of revision, you'll be better able to remember the topic than you could just by reading through them. We'll end the video with some of our top tips for taking good notes. Always take some time early on in the process. to Think about what you want your notes to achieve and how you might use them in the future. Knowing why you're making notes and having a plan will help you to make the best use of the time you have available to make them. Try and be consistent in how you take your notes in any one project or paper. This will help you enormously when it comes to writing up or revising as you won't have to decide for several different styles. Always use your own words when making notes, unless you're recording a direct quote. You may think it at the time, but we promise you that you won't remember which words are yours at a later date, and this could lead to penalties for plagiarism, whether this was deliberate or not. And finally, remember that your notes are living documents, not just something you write and then never look at again. Add to them, annotate them as you gain more understanding of a topic. Look for answers to any questions you've asked, and use these to fill in any gaps. This will result in a more complete picture of the topic and save you time when it comes to using your notes in the future. We hope this video has been useful. You can find more information on note-taking and other topics on our LibGuide.